G'day guys, welcome back. Welcome to Pouring Your Heart Out. Now today I have got uh, a couple of different things to show you today to share with you. Now the first one is this <laughs> huge <laughs> machine. It is a resin curing machine and I say curing machine like this <laughs> because you know, resin doesn't need a machine to cure. Resin will just cure on its own. But if you've got something like this that will heat the air um, around your resin piece, it will cure much faster. Okay, so this is what I have got here. Now, this one is from Let's Resin. It's basically all it is. It's got little feet on the bottom. It's got a motor in the top and... All you do is you just lift that out like that. This is what I'm going to put my silicone, well, I'm going to put down the silicone mat first, you know, just to protect it. I've just cut a piece of silicone out of a different mat. It kind of just fits there. So um, just, you know, in case you spill or something. Now, the, the good thing I like about this resin curing machine is that... It's just a base and a lid. It's not one of those that, you know, has got like different levels and you have to slide trays in and things like that because how do you slide a wet coaster? Like if it's full of resin, how on earth are you supposed to pick it up and slide it in on a shelf? So I think this is just a game changer. It is amazing. So um, I've also used, I've had this for a, uh, a little while now. I've used it for quite a few times. I've also been putting my silicone molds in here. If I want them to cure really fast, I put my silicone molds in there. Um, but this is how it works. You just pop that on. It just takes a couple of seconds just to get it lined up correctly. And all you do is you press that. And away we go. You can hear the motor. Um, as it heats up, you can see that there's like a red element in there. I don't know if you can see it as it heats up. It's nice and warm. <laughs> um, so that's basically it. There's no temperature control. There's no timer. When you want to turn it off, you just do that. Okay, so that's the first thing. So thank you, Let's Resin, for sending me that to try. I will link that. Um, I will link it down in my description. And also there's a coupon code. Yay, you can get 10% off. All right, so let's get started with this. Oh, the other thing I wanted to show you too is like if you're doing a really big piece, all right, um, maybe it's a square piece or it's a rectangle coaster mold and it's not going to fit into the round base, that's fine. What I've done previously, I've just got a couple of pieces of wood. I'll show you. Hang on, stay right there. Stay right there. And I'll get my little bits of wood. <clears throat> Just anything will do. Just get a, get yourself a couple of bits of wood like that. Put it either side of whatever it is you're curing. Put that over the top. And away you go. So I have done this as well. Sometimes I've lifted it up, like on a couple of bits of wood, to make it higher. And it's worked perfectly. So I think that is a great, great addition to have. So... Yeah, that's what I've been doing with that. Now, back to today's pour. Um, I'm going to use a mould that I've had for quite a while, but I haven't actually used it yet. I've been so busy with, with all my other pours. I'm just going to send to that. So this is my large faceted pendant mould. So it's got all these, I don't know if you can see it, shimmering, like faceted, you know, diamond cut edge. So anyway, that's it there. Um, it's got quite a lot. We've got two medium circles, two large circles, two large hearts. We've got two teardrops, two ovals, two kind of rectangles. Um, and then there's two of these. Oh gosh, can't remember what they're called. They've got a weird name. And then two little diamondy shapes as well. So going to do those. I've got so much to talk to you about today. Right, the other thing is um, I needed to find out, because I want to put things in them today, I actually want to put in these fantasy films that I've got. Fantasy film, look at these. Fantasy film. 
haven't used them before, don't really, really know what to do with them, but I'm going to try and work that out today. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll zoom you in a little bit more. Um, now, I wanted to, because I want to cut the fantasy film, like, to put in here, I needed to know what sizes to cut. So yesterday I poured just some blue into all of them. And... Um, like so. So that's what I did yesterday. I poured blue into all of them so that I had these as templates. Now if you, I'll just move that off the side, if you buy this particular mold from my eBay store I will send you my little template. It's, it's nothing special you know it's just <laughs> I just thought you know you might <clears throat> want it rather than having to pour into everything so that you've got the blanks because now I've got the blanks and I can you know, get a piece of fantasy film, I can measure it out and I can draw around it. So that's why I did that. But um, yeah, I thought if, if anyone wants this mould, um, I'll send this, I'll photocopy it, I'll send it with. And then all you need to do is, I probably, um, maybe you can put it on some card or something, but you can cut these out um, and then, you know, you can, you've got that piece of paper then and you can put it onto your film uh, whatever it is you want to use and then you can cut it out easily and put them in there. Just cut on the inside of the line now, okay? So that's that. Right, I've gone, a few, gone through a few different things. So let me move all these out of the way for a minute, all my little, my little blanks. So that's what they've turned out like. Hey, they're really sweet, very shiny. Make a lovely pendant. You could put a little... Um, you know, a stick-on bale on there, or you could screw through it, whatever you want to do. If you're into wire wrapping, you could do that. Really amazing. All right, now, moving on. Moving on. Fantasy film. I really don't know what it is. I don't know anything about it. Um, but I bought these from... Can you see there? Artglitter.com So... Well, that's where they came from anyway, artglitter.com, a fantasy film, um, stamp it, press it, cut it, sew it, wash it, so yeah, um, like I said I haven't used it before, I have heard people say that you can heat it, this one's Krista's eyes, I should keep them in their bags shouldn't I, this one is spring morning, it's like a green, and we have In the Glen, I think it's more like a coppery, greeny tone. And this one is Blue Nile. There were lots to choose from. <laughs> um, I just got these few. Alrighty, moving on. Now, I'm going to just move this out of the way for now. Because I want to move on to my next step. I've got my little bit of... A little bit of wood here. So these are just some I played around with yesterday because, like I said, some someone said that you need to heat them, and it says on the instructions there that you can um, place ironing cloth or parchment paper over the film, press it down with the iron at medium heat. I think the heat brings out more colours, and you can stick two pieces together. I've stuck two here together, um, so and you get different you get different colours. It's quite amazing stuff, I think. <laughs> but anyway, I want to cut the shapes out um, like this to fit into my my pendant mold. So this one I heated with my heat gun and it's really kind of melted it. And I thought, well, I don't really want to do that because when I put it in my resin, it's going to get lots of bubbles underneath it. So I'm thinking I'm just going to maybe give it like a... This one I kind of squished like this to get it some, just a bit of detail in it like that, just so that, you know, it picks up different colours, different angles. So anyway, let's just get started, shall we? Um, and I've got the board here in case I want to heat it so I can heat onto my wooden board. All right, now we'll just, just cut a bit need a lot because I haven't got that you know the pendants aren't very big so I'll just cut a piece of each and put you back into your little bag so I know which one you are 
So it's only thin. Oh, look at that. So we'll just cut a little bit of each one. But if anyone out there has used fantasy film um, in resin, like I've seen, I've seen when I sort of searched it on YouTube, I didn't see any where people put it in resin. I saw people making like, um, you know, butterfly wings and things like that out of it, but I haven't actually seen anybody putting it in resin. So if you've done it, if you've seen anyone do it, love to know how it turned out because as I said I don't really know what I'm doing here I'm just I'm just winging it okay so I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to scrunch them all because I like the, the scrunched effect oh look at that one they're all different and again I don't know whether I should be heating it because I don't want it to go all melted like that so I may just give it like a really light heat but then you may not even see any of the activation like the color I think it kind of activates I'm really not sure <laughs> I'm not sure okay that one doesn't seem to do a lot it's got like a purpley hue to it this one it's got like a greeny pinky color this one is like a bluey pinky color and then this one greeny goldy <laughs> pinky color I don't know all right so let's just try one I think I need to scrunch them more I, I, look this might be a bit of a long video so I do apologize if it's going to be a long video you can fast forward there's lots there's lots to do so yeah all right now I'm going to get my heat gun and I'm just going to pop it on low. Oh, it's a bit tangled. The cord's tangled. All right, so let's just heat it. So I've got my wooden board there. It's not, it's not like very hot. You don't have to worry about burning yourself. Let's just heat this a little bit. I don't want to heat it so much that it starts melting and, you know, warping. I just want to heat it to see whether or not I... It, it's going to do anything like if the colors are going to like activate and it's going to get more more colors starting to warp a little bit there maybe i should be heating it before i scrunch it it does look a bit different doesn't it, it does look a bit different okay so let's do that to all of them i'll heat them and then i'll scrunch them how about that so if i see it bit where it's starting to curl over I'm just going to stop give it another little scrunch it does, it does look different it, it does look more bright after I've done that it definitely does look more bright I should have a, a before and after piece oh what am I doing heat first then scrunch heat then scrunch okay here we go You know, if it only needs a light press from an iron, I don't think it needs a lot of heat. When you put your heat gun down, make sure you're putting it down somewhere safe and it's not touching onto anything flammable. Right, last one. So there were lots and lots of colours to choose from. Um, I just, it was hard to choose. I just chose a few. But um, you never know, I might go back and buy more. All right, so that's that done. I can see more of a green in that now, right through the center. I give that a bit more heat. I like that. Oh, look at that. Can you see how it's gone? It's changed. It's got like a green through it. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> oh, yeah, it definitely has changed. All right, I'll put my little board away. Uh, put my heat gun away. I'm going to get set up here. I've got a little, this is a little hook you see. And under my table here, I've got one of those little U hooks. And I just hook that on under, under my table there for when I need it next. All right, so 
that's another step done. Now what we need to do is we need to cut out some of these. Now for the sake of the video, because it's already going to be really long, I'm just going to do, I'm just going to do these big ones, okay? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's all I'm going to do. And look, I've got lots. If I had more time, um, I would do the rest, but I just want to see how it goes. So I'm just going to do four for now, all right? So I'll just put that in the corner there so I'm not going to waste too much um, of my fantasy film. So just going to draw around it. I don't know if this stuff has a top and a bottom. It's not a very good pen. Um, where's another one? There we go. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if it's got a top and a bottom. I'm just going to do this. So draw around there. In that one. But if you're a really crafty person and you enjoy doing jewellery, um, you know, you could spend a lot of time doing all of those pieces uh, if you've got market stalls or anything like that you know I think these would be such an amazing unique thing to do so once I've done this I'm going to cut them out I'm going to mix up my resin um, I'm going to mix up I'm going to use my thin resin I'm going to use the um, platinum ultra clear um, just so that hopefully we won't get too many bubbles, you know, stuck under it. Because I'm going to fill my little cavities and I'm going to put this in. So let's cut these out. I won't bore you by me doing them all. I'm just going to cut little squares out and then I can go around with my smaller scissors. I'll keep these pieces. <laughs> keep them. You could always, you know, if you had little bits left over, you could always cut them into tiny little strips um, and put them, just, you know, put them inside resin. I actually want to put a piece on the base of my turtle as well. I think that would be amazing. So, yeah, all your little bits that you've got left over, you can just pop them in a bag, keep them till later. You could shred them, whatever you want to do. All right, so I'm just going to cut all these out. Um mix up my resin and then I will come back to you. I'm going to cut on the inside of that black line and I'm going to come in a little bit because um, the outer edge is obviously the widest part of the mold and I'm not going to fill it up all the way so I'm going to need to just make them a little bit smaller because I'm going to top them with a little bit of black I was going to do all different colours, but I think for the sake of the video today, I'm just going to do them all in black because there's such little amounts. Okay, so that's where I've gone. I've just cut on the inside of that black line, a little bit on the inside because the the cavity goes up, up, up on a bit of an angle. So, um, yeah, make it a little bit smaller. And again, keep those. You can just get some alcohol um, on a cloth and wipe off that marker and then you can still use that piece again. All right. Oh my gosh, verbal diarrhea today. <laughs> I'll see you in a minute once I've mixed up my resin. Righto, so I have got my little pieces cut. <laughs> Sticking to me. Um, and <laughs> get off me. <laughs> uh, I've got my resin made up. Oh my gosh, I might have to put my, take my gloves off later <laughs> to do these. Okay, um, now the other thing I was thinking about... While I was standing there stirring my resin, when you've got this, um, I, just, I just put all my little bits in here. Instead of cutting these out, how about if you just got your little piece of cellophane, fantasy film or whatever it is you're wanting to use, put that over there like that and draw around with your pen. There you go. And then you would keep that safe and you wouldn't be cutting into it. What do you think? Oh my gosh, that just would make a lot more sense, wouldn't it? If we did that. All right, so do that. Now, I've lost a piece. Oh my gosh, where's it gone? Oh, there it is. All right, there it is. Okay, now I've got my resin. Um, I've made up way too much. It's the Ultra Clear by Platinum. Nice thin resin. 
just going to pour it into my little paper cup here and I, as you saw I poured it onto my stick so I hit the stick and then ran off so again hopefully not making too many bubbles alrighty so here we go just clear resin um, there's, there's so many different things you could do with this you guys you could fill them to the top like put your fantasy film in or your cellophane or whatever it is you want to use fill them to the top um, and then you can after it's set, if you don't want to do resin, you could paint the backs with different coloured nail polish uh, and that would give you like different, you could do like a different colour on each one. So if you're doing two steps of resin, you just fill them all up, put your fantasy film in, when it's set, paint them with your nail polish. So that's an option as well if you don't want to do two layers of resin. I just need to make sure that I'm leaving enough room for my resin background. So filling it up quite full, but not all the way. And I'm just going to push that into the sides there so that we get a nice shape. That one could do with a little bit more. I just find it easier to use a little paper cup than I'm not, you know, pouring too much in. I'll have to make some puffy hearts with my leftovers. Now this resin takes, when I'm doing a, like a big deep Larimar type coaster, um, it sets in about six hours. But I'm going to use the curing machine today um, and it should only take about an hour. So how wonderful is that? Oh my gosh. And just pushing that to the edges. Pushing that into the little point. Like so. Okay. Now don't torch these. They're only little and you wouldn't want to, you know, hit the um the silicone if it's a big thing like I don't mind torching just in the middle but you've got to keep away from your, your silicone otherwise it can melt now I am going to take my gloves off for this next step um, and I will be careful don't you worry I will be careful I'm going to use a little silicone brush now I have no idea how this is going to work make sure that that's clean no dust on it I'm going to lay that down and I want to, if I can, I don't know if it's going to go actually under the silicone. Oh, there's a bubble. But I want to give it contact all the way. Let's see, I can see a bubble under there already. There's a bubble. Okay. It's probably not going to work the best. Maybe if I start at one end. That might be better. And push. That might work better. I'm going to have to take that one out because I can see there's a bubble there. Get that out. Get those bubbles off. Get out bubble. You're the culprit. Now, because I've got bubbles there, I am going to have to just do a little baby torch, just like that, just because I know there's a bubble there. Okay, oh my gosh, you guys. Oh, the colour, the colour, oh my gosh, the colour. All right, let's try this again. Start there. And I'm going to kind of push down. Okay, I think that's good. I think that's got it. Might be a tiny little bubble in there because the bubble, there's resin in the bubble now. Uh, there's bubble in the resin. Oh my gosh. All right. Oh, that one didn't cut that one very well, did I? Let's just fix that up. The scissors is a bit blunt. Let 
that'll do. All right, so same thing. I'm going to start at the end here. I'm just going to touch that to the resin and then slowly dab, dab, dab. Hopefully we're not getting bubbles like so. How's that? I think that's okay. I think that's okay. Now the only problem is with the with the crinkling like this, like I can see that there's a bit of a high spot just there because of my my crinkling on that one. Um, what I'll do though, once the resin has started to cure a bit more, I can push that down and kind of flatten it out a little bit. Can't do it now because the resin's just going to ooze out the sides, but maybe after a half an hour or so in the curing machine. Um, I'll set my timer for half an hour anyway, and I'll come back and I'll check it. And I'll see if it's gone hard enough for me to just kind of level the surfaces a bit, because I do feel there's a little bit of bits poking up, which you wouldn't have the problem if you didn't scrunch it. You know, you could just put it down and it would just be flat. All right, so that's it. That's all we need to do. Um, put the lid on. And sort of feel around, make sure that it's sitting evenly on all the sides. And away we go! I'll check it in half an hour. So it's been less than an hour and these, these have set. <laughs> and I did check them after half an hour because I was going to like, you know, poke down that uh, fantasy film. But I didn't need to. It had already dropped down into the resin so maybe the blower had done it and just heated it and they just yeah it's all nice and smooth and level now so I don't need to do that which is great so I've just mixed up a little bit of black clear resin with some black pigment paste in it and I'm just going to pour a tiny bit over the tops Try not to overflow it. A little bit to start with and then we'll just level this. Push it out to the edges. That one might have a bit much. It doesn't look as if you're putting very much in when you pour a puddle, but then when it starts to level itself, you realise that you may have put a little bit much in. If you have put a bit much in, the best way to get it out is just to grab yourself a little bit of paper towel, put it on the top like that, and then just lift it up. like so that's the easiest way to do it and then if you need to wipe anything wipe the edges you can just go in with a baby wipe like so easy to do all right let's keep filling these ones up and then uh, I'll put the curing machine back on <laughs> took a bit much out of that one uh, back on for another I think it was only about 45 minutes actually I, I forgot to time it I put it on for half an hour I timed the half an hour and then um, I just put it back on again so I don't actually remember how long I put it back on for maybe another half an hour so there we go that's that done got a little bit of black left and tiny to, tiny little torch just for some bubbles in the center there and away we go back on top with the lid make sure it's on properly and press go and I'll see you in about an hour okay guys so it's been about another hour um, so what I did well 
after an hour I just turned this off I left the lid on um, and just let it cool down in there so it's sort of cooking a little bit in its own heat as well you know until um, until it's done so it's still warm I feel that they're still warm nice and toasty <laughs> it's cold today it was five degrees celsius when i woke up this morning so anyway let's get this mold out and you can see the mold is fine that's all fine no problems with anything um i have got my board under here um i would suggest that look i don't know how how hot it gets um, maybe put it on a piece of timber like a chopping board or something if you're going to put it on like a, a melamine or laminate bench top just in case the the heat might warp it I, I don't know I would just do that just to be on the safe side but that's just me right let's zoom you in because I don't think it gets very hot um it doesn't say on on there anyway <laughs> let's let's get on to these and enough of that but you know safety first okay now let's have a little look now i could see that there was a few little bubbles on this one just because i took that paper out and then put it back in again so popped out nice and easily well this is so exciting isn't it trying something new trying something new it's always exciting now i don't know which which papers i used where so mold is perfectly fine nice and shiny oh my gosh this is this is nerve-wracking okay here we go let's look at the little heart first one of the little hearts um yeah i don't know which which fantasy films in here but i can i guess i could go back and have a look move those out of the way so that we can we can see all right oh, here we go oh i'm really nervous what if it doesn't look nice here we go oh wow Look at that. Oh my gosh, look at it. It's changing color. <gasps> wow. That is incredible. So many different colors in there. See, here we've got, I hope you can see what I'm seeing. We've got orange and a bit of green. And then we tilt it and we're getting that dark blue with a teal. Oh, that is just divine. Now, of course, if you decided to put blue or red or purple or whatever color on the back, you're going to get a different look. Now, what you could do also is stick two together and drill through them and make an adorable keychain. I mean, this would still also be an adorable keychain, but you could um, stick two together. But I would put a little stick on bale on that and turn that into a, a Stunning, stunning pendant. Look at it. It's so shimmery and shiny. All right, enough of that one. Let's have a look at the other heart. The other heart. All right, here we go. Oh, I hope this is nice. Oh, that's totally different. Now, this one I'm getting hints of copper it's like a mountain with a river running down the bottom of it can you see the blue in there i don't know if you can see the blue i might have to take them outside so this way i'm getting basically like a copper burnt orange kind of a look and then oh i tilt it that way and I'm, i can see some green and if i tilt it this way i'm getting more of that deep sapphire blue with some green in there they look really deep. There's not a lot of depth to them, even though they're just flat. Wow. I hope you can see what I can see. I'll take them outside for you shortly. All right. One of the hearts. Not the hearts. One of the circles. One of the circles. All right. Here we go. Ooh. This one's got a lot more greeny blue happening in it. Look at that. Look at all that blue in there. And I wonder what it would look like if you just... um like didn't put a top coat just did clear you might want to just put clear on all of them like I said and then get your nail polish out and do some pink and some red and some blue and some black you could put like a glittery nail polish on there I don't know if that would make any difference oh, just divine so pretty look at that sparkle too wow they're all a little bit different. Now, what about this one? 
Last one, lucky last. Let's have a look. Ooh, now that one is totally different. This must have been that blue one, hey? Because I'm getting deep ocean vibes from this one. Look at that. Blue, green, there's a touch of orange happening in there as well. I don't know if you can see the orange. Oh, that's divine. I love that one. I think that's my favorite. Wow. These are incredible, you guys. Incredible. I'll fit them all on my hand. <laughs> I don't know if I can fit them all on my hand. There we go. Look at that. That is so pretty. Which is your favorite? Do you have a favorite? Now, I wonder if I can get outside one-handed holding my camera. I'll, I'm going to try. Let's try. Okay, I'm outside, just in the driveway. I can't really see into the screen because it's bright sunshine and my screen's just black. So hopefully you can see. Is it picking up all the colours? I hope so. hope so. That was a lot of fun, you guys. Oh, I love that blue one, but then I do love blues. And uh, there's other colours in the fantasy film. I only got the four, but there are heaps of others as well. So, oh, you just see me going back and getting some more. <laughs> this is so much fun. All right, I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching. And, uh, yep, I will put the link to this particular facet mould. I've got a small facet mould and a large facet mould. This is the large um, cabochon or pendant. I'll put it in the description um, so that you can easily find it. And if I can find the link for the fantasy film, I'll pop that in as well. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed my video. Take care, guys. Bye for now.